we see here. Is it possible to show an example with big data grid, something like 10,000 rows, more than 40 columns, and then 100,000 uh, rows? Our team is having big troubles with big data, and we search for a reliable grid. Um, we can probably take that 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 offline. Uh, really, it, it, there, there might be a couple of issues on, on what could be going on. At the end of the day, what matters is, and I mean, I, I could of course add uh, more data to my to my backend, and uh, and we can see how how the grid would react. Uh, at this at the end of the day, let's say that we're only looking at, uh, as we can see, we're only looking at five rows here, but the server's response is ret re reporting, uh, even though it's not passing them at all, is reporting that there are in total seven. So that essentially we know that there are two. That we're not looking at, right? But this number could be, you know, millions and, uh, uh, and trillions, really. But we're only fetching them in iterations of five at a time. So it's, you know, it's up to, it's up to you and up to you, the requirements of the application to make sure that, you know, the application is as fast as possible and that you're not necessarily putting them all on the screen at the same time because yes I, I, at some point you know regardless of what product you end up using it, it, it is going to happen that it's just too much for the browser to handle that um, so the it matter um, it's how much data you show at a time that that really matters um, but yeah we can we can probably take uh, um, take that that conversation offline for more specifics on on a, on, on this given case. I also see a question here on yeah webinar on jQuery's version of Kendo UI. Um, we so the 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 Kendo webinars that we have this one is in particular regarding Angular, but uh, we have had some on 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 jQuery. So we're kind of we're covering everything that's related to the Kendo UI family. It's not just going to be, it's not just going to be Angular. Um, Angular is the, the newer product, so it's it's probable that we're covering that more often, but we haven't uh, forgotten about jQuery UI. Um, the one that we did on data sources uh, um, last month, it, this was entirely on, on jQuery. So it was similar to what we have done today, um, but for jQuery. So we, yeah, we're still going to be covering jQuery for sure. All right, so we're 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 getting some questions here on how to export uh, data as Excel. That is actually covered under one of our examples right here. So we can take a look at the code there. Um, essentially, let's let's see it running actually first before we look at the code. So we see we have some data here um, and we have a button to export to Excel. Uh, now to see how that uh, how that works is essentially there is going to be a button at the top on the on the toolbar and this button in particular is going to have a, a, this uh, angular directive that says kendo grid excel command. Um, so that should allow the Excel export that we see right here. Here we go. So that's, it's just like if you have used the jQuery Excel export functionality, this is essentially, you know, the same philosophy. It's the same approach as, as to implement that functionality. So it's a, it's a, really it's a mirror of that functionality. Somebody's asking here is, uh, will they be able to replay this session? Yes, this is actually being recorded and we will, um, we will post it to YouTube um, uh, after, very soon after we're, we're done here. So I did wanted to show um, the, the way that it works. Really, it's all always going to be driven through the through the documentation, uh, I find that the documentation is very detailed. Um, you know, we we have covered um, 
pagination, but of course sorting is also something that you probably will care about. Um, the approach is, is really quite similar. There's going to be a sortable option, which again, you're probably going to set to true. And then you handle the sort change event, similarly to what we did with the page change event. Um, now, of course, you this is where you can get, um, you can kind of mix and match um, if you want to sort by the whole grid or only by the current view of the grid, it depends on the requirements. We do have some um, kind of full blown samples that basically do absolutely everything on, on on one grid. I'll show those in a second. These are, they're somewhat hidden in the documentation, but um, they're very, very useful. So for instance, this is the, um, uh, the data by, uh, data binding basics. If you go to the automatic data binding, you'll find that we actually have created what we call the data binding directive. And it's used to simplify handling of those data operations that could get repetitive. So for instance, we see this, uh, this grid right here that's got uh, the pagination and the sorting and uh, even the grouping. And it's actually done with little to, to, to no code. And the trick is essentially to use the Kendo grid binding directive. Now it could or could not be useful unless you want to do, you know, some custom things. Um, but um, let's take a look at the code very quickly. Um, we see that the grid uh, data is what we bound to it. So let's, uh, let's open that plonker. So the grid data in this case is the array of customers, which we have right here. So this is a plain array of data, but instead of handling all those uh, events ourselves, we're doing this, uh, we're using this directive that takes care of everything, which is why we have filterable true, groupable true, pageable true, sortable true, and we set the page size, and then everything is just working. So there's not a lot to show there other than, than setting, setting the data now instead of just the data of the grid, which as you can notice, we don't set the data of the grid. We set the Kendo grid binding uh, directive to the data array. Now this can also be done with a remote um, data source, but it does require that if you're going to apply it that way, you need to basically create a custom version of the, of the directive. And there's a sample of that as well. We can take a look at. So this one is using a custom version, which is this products binding. Um, and again, this is doing remote operations now uh, with sorting and everything. Um, so it's, uh, it's a little bit more involved, but um, it could be useful depending on your, on your use case. Somebody is asking, what is the YouTube channel link? Uh, you'll find that under the um, right here on the on the page for the webinars, we we see that you'll get a video right here on the specific uh, specific webinar that you that you want to take a look at. So filtering, um, we we saw that there. Um, and somebody wants to see the freeze um, freeze column functionality. Um, let me see if I can find that sample. <laughs> yeah, I, we probably have to take that uh, offline because uh, frozen columns is a feature that. Uh, it's either already completely there or we're still kind of working on it uh, because it, it is implemented in the jQuery grid. But um, I wouldn't be entirely sure on, on, the, on the Angular grid, to be honest. Does the grid support infinite, infinite scrolling? It, 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 well, infinite <laughs> uh, depends on what that means, but virtual scrolling is a feature that we do have. 
Um, the, the really infinite scrolling is in a way a type of pagination. Uh, when you're doing remote, uh, it's also going to make a new request, of course. Um, you can see that this is one way to do it. And we also have implemented, I don't know how well this goes through the webinar, but we've also implemented a debounce uh, functionality that allows you to, um, let's open that as a plunker. It allows you to basically wait a little bit longer so that not for every scroll change, you fetch new data. That way it can feel much faster as we see right here. So I can go all the way down to you know thousands of records and then we see 81,000. It takes a, a little bit longer because it waits until you actually held, uh, let go of the mouse and then it fetches the data. So this is the bounce functionality. There's basically two approaches of doing the, the scroll mode. What version of Angular is this working with? So we are targeting really the latest version, if, I, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we try not to basically stay uh, behind. I'm, I'm, if I'm using an older version, which I believe I might be, because now it's like up to 4.1 or something like that, that shouldn't be a, a, a problem anyway if you're using the latest, latest version. That is because my version of the CLI is not necessarily the latest one, but the Kendo product should work with four and, and up. Um, some functionality is not available if you're still using uh, Angular 2. We have support for it, but uh, the, every new feature that we add to the product is going to be more um, geared towards Angular 4 and, and really the latest. All right, so I don't think we have um, any more questions. I want to thank everybody for joining us again for this uh, for this webinar, and um, we'll see you next time.